sound department used her iPhone headphones. <gasps> so some license expired. <laughs> and of course, I don't get a notification that the license to your sound connector just, <laughs> just expired 20 minutes ago. Like, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday night. I'm Dr. Bosworth, and despite the sound uh, distractions, I did not give up. We are here live in South Dakota, and I just want to put a shout out to the folks that uh, met me this weekend, this past uh, few days in Pella, Iowa. I uh, was super thankful to be uh, sharing my favorite workshop on repairing brains Welcome and using Robert all of the things as an internal medicine physician uh, that I teach in my I clinic. Um, the, 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 well, there's a few like highlights of um, my favorite things, and one of them is this giving this workshop. Um, so just a uh, low sound. Okay. Oh, I can turn up sound. I can turn up the sound. <laughs> if you uh, are listening to me, so. Thank you very much for tuning in, and if you can, if you do have any sound issues, please just type them in. I am watching the comments, and I'll tell you, I've had more hiccups for that sound than I care to admit. It's beyond embarrassing. It's just annoying, um, <laughs> but um, I am happy to be live, and I have a great conversation that I... Uh, really got the uh, the, so uh, the questions <coughs> from the folks and a couple of the people that showed up in Pella asked me some questions and uh, my mom uh, now 75 uh, kind of reinforced the question that I want to address tonight by saying when you get home I've been watching some of your YouTubes and I have some questions like Graham Rose I'm on really it. I'll the, answer those questions. Yeah, so again, questions. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing where you're from. I am thankfully home here in South Dakota, and actually I'm on the road. Quick thing, first in the morning. Um, again, it says echo, echo, echo. Oh, I hope that. Mm, is everybody getting an echo? Oh, I bet you got to turn off. Hold on. Give me a second. I, I think I know how to fix this one. Uh, audio maybe. Again, uh, thank you for uh, sharing where you're from. I am thankfully home here in South. Well, again, uh, thank you for. Uh okay, see if that makes that echo better. See if that's the right answer. Okay, so several second second delay better. And still no, still an echo. Is your 10 second delay on? 10 second delay is not on. Thanks for the help though, because I pushed a bunch of buttons trying to get it to go. So um, better. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Thank you for uh, um, echo is gone. I think it was that button. Again, I have almost got a doctorate in all things that can possibly go wrong in the world of sound and YouTube. But um, this weekend, we uh, just want to say a super shout out to the people that did drive to Pella and join me. I see an airplane drives over. Um, to learn about brains and, brains and how to heal them. Again, I got into the ketogenic diet and teaching it after um, just continuing to look at ways to help my patients heal their brains the fastest. And boy, I had my socks knocked off about three years ago, two, almost three years ago now, when the approach to repairing a brain um, was so much faster if I added a chemistry set in the patient of ketosis. And I have lots of important things that I teach patients on how to, important it is if they've had a brain injury, whether that's a concussion or depression or a seizure disorder or Parkinson's um, or a drug addiction. Uh, all of those have led to uh, their brain not being healthy and you do not have to live with the brain you have today. It is possible to fix that. And I, uh, this course started out to be a few hours. It's now a 10 hour course that the Department of Defense actually has hired me to teach to some of the first responders, but also their um, under, undercover agents that 
um, or they're military people or therapists that are kind of on the front lines in our country helping to uh, repair and understand addiction uh, and address the addiction issues. So I really am uh, thankful that uh, the talents of teaching get to be put with keto. It's actually not a lot of keto in that workshop. I had several people ask some keto questions and I said, you know what? The stuff I talk about in this workshop you cannot find on YouTube, but I have a ton of keto information that you can go to YouTube. And one of the fans, um, I think it's Sandy Smith, if I got your name wrong, I'm super sorry, but I uh, made this t-shirt for me. And I said I was going to wear it, and I went to go uh, uh, get set up for this and thought, oh, I have my, I have had everything, all the mics and everything on, although they're all off now because of the sound problem. But... Um, Anyway, I just want to say that is the just such a special uh, act of kindness to go. So uh, I have uh, just a few uh, housekeeping things. There were the the way that I got several of the things I'm going to talk about tonight, or several of the people have over the last month. I've been reading a lot of the comments that came in while I was on vacation. I, I haven't replied to a lot of them because there's probably three thousand of them, uh, but I kept a running dialogue on some of the subtext of questions and boy when I was in Pella somebody asked me this question again I get home and my mom brings it up so that kind of is like the trifecta for saying all right I'll do my show tonight on this question about immune systems so um, I'm going to tell a couple stories that I share in my um, in my workshop uh, that uh, just teach about when when we look at your immune system and we depend on our immune system for life. That I talk about one of the ways that you can die is that you can shut down your immune system completely. And we talk about different ways that you can do that. Uh, the other thing that I bring up in my, my uh, lectures, but also when I'm teaching patients about their immune system is, you know, your immune system is one of the biggest defense systems to fighting off how infection invades and then just if it doesn't kill you, it whittles away your energy and it takes away your your spark, your your resilience. Um, and uh, the the better uh, your immune system is, whatever your body is taking on, whether it's cancer or stress or um, an infection, uh, your system will respond. Uh, uh, faster, stronger, and with less uh, other consequences. Uh, one of the most vulnerable places for our system is um, our gut lining. So in medicine, we think of it from mouth to anus. <laughs> so you start at the, the moment you eat something or you breathe in, and that is foreign. That is not that is not self. And the body has to do a really good job of having its strongest army, its strongest defense uh, in those most vulnerable places where that's your mouth, that's the back of your throat, and then from the part you swallow all the way through your intestines, and then all the way till, it, till you end up getting rid of the parts you don't need. So when, when we look at immune systems, um, we can judge people's immune systems by how well they can fight off little infections versus how well they can handle chemotherapy, radiation, uh, versus how well they, um, they seem to, to bounce back after something has hit them. So if influenza sweeps the, sweeps the community and you have the weakest immune system, you're going to have the most symptoms, you're going to have them the longest. And where I want this uh, talk to lead to is why is it with uh, the ketogenic diet that we see an improvement in their immune system? and a, a decrease in their symptoms from their autoimmune problems. Uh, so let's back up a little bit and say, what, um, uh, what, is your, what is the way that your white blood cells or your immune system fights off infection? So if you take in a, a toxin, something that uh, you're eating that your body doesn't like, um, what should happen is your gut should not absorb it um, maybe your gut kind of secretes out a bunch of slime and you get diarrhea or you throw up to get rid of that toxin. And those, all of those responses are built around how strong are those white blood cells. Um, if you've got white blood cells that have cancer in them, like my mom did, uh, does but did, um, 
she could she couldn't absorb most of her foods and the stuff she was absorbing there was lots of things that she shouldn't have let in her system uh, that that her body was allowing in because that lining in her gut you can call it leaky gut syndrome you can call it uh, an allergy you can call it a swelling in the gut lining you can call it irritable bowel but if you get down to a microscopic level what's really happening is the gut lining is is supposed to be this really tight barrier between uh, foreign, which is your food, or, in, or the infections that naturally live in that bowel, foreign and, and self. And when you've got nice, strong, healthy cells that repair and replace injuries immediately, that barrier is super tight. And then on the other side of that barrier, you have all of your white blood cells, like your best army to say, if anybody does get through bowel, inflammatory bowel, uh, leaky gut, or um, just Sometimes you can, they call it old, but it shouldn't happen when you get old. Uh, your, the, the, the lining is swollen and there's spaces between the cells. And now you can get little uh, foreign objects in the name of food, in the name of toxins that get into your system. And now your white blood cells say, okay, let me fight you. Let, let's, let's, you know, wall them off and not let them in any further. But they can only handle so much at a time. And as the overwhelming tax of infection gets up there your your army is is it fails it's it's you know useless is a little extreme but it's really minimal on what uh, white blood cells uh, and they're doing that inside your bone marrow and inside your lymph nodes um, again the strongest and most populated string of immune of lymph nodes is uh, along that gut lining so starting at the back of your throat all the way through your intestines is where you'll find the most of these lymph cells. And when they start to make mistakes because the lymph cells are swollen, because the lymph nodes are swollen, because they're being asked to make way more white blood cells than they can, and they're doing it in the setting of being inflamed and not healthy, they start to make mistakes. So you get a few white blood cells that say, um, hey, this looks like an infection. Everybody come over here and let's fight the infection. But that white blood cell made a mistake and that wasn't an infection that was a thyroid cell and those white blood cells are trying to do their job but they're they're fighting the wrong team they're attacking the body and then there's another there's another syndrome where uh, the white blood cell says hey this looks like an enemy I'm gonna fight it and it starts to fight the uh, fight this enemy and really it's the joint spaces uh, in their joints and it keeps recruiting friends. It sends out this, these little like hormones called chemotaxis to say, hey, white blood cells, come on, I have an enemy here. It's invaded us. We need to fight it. We need to fight it. And it attacks and attacks and attacks and attacks. Uh, and it's, it's making a mistake, but, but it, it doesn't have anybody else to, to, to undo that. And we call it, when it, when it attacks the, the knuckles or the joint spaces, we call it rheumatoid arthritis. And, and when those little white blood cells accidentally attack your thyroid, we call it, you know, thyroid Hashimoto's, I mean, autoimmune thyroiditis. Um, when the white blood cells attack the, the, the blood vessels, we call it lupus or um, uh, there's a couple other stranger terms, but lupus is the most common one that you, you people know about. Um, if the white blood cells accidentally attack the lining of your gut, we call it Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Uh, all of these are different autoimmune problems. And although autoimmune sounds like this lovely diagnosis that, okay, my doctor will fi fix it, um, the answer for the doctors when people have autoimmune problems is to shut down their immune system. Well, just stop the attack. So they give them drugs that are like, that are chemotherapy type drugs that slow the immune system down. They give them steroids, which take out the inflammation, but really slows down that immune system. And although the bad guys, the ones that are attacking yourself slow down, so do all the good guys. And this is where you run into this cycle of a syndrome that says, yep, what the doctor is doing is trying to correct that problem, trying to correct your uh, immune system from attacking itself. And, um, and then we start to do things like, in my mom's case, she had cancer of her white blood cells, but that wasn't the only thing that was wrong. She also had autoimmune thyroiditis. Her, her white blood cells kept attacking her thyroid. And so we 
worked on the cancer, but instead of really chasing much of that thyroid problem, we just said, here, here's a prescription for thyroid medications. And her autoimmune problem was related to the thyroid, but if you look at a bigger picture, she was 71 with cancer of her white blood cells, with a gut that didn't protect her from the foreign objects of her food, uh, and the thyroid that really was being attacked by her own white blood cells. And what, what I'm trying to do here is connect the dots to say, do you have a strong immune system? And why is it when people go on keto that they get much less infections? And if you, if you are in my clinic and, and several of the other internists that use uh, keto, we continue to see a reduction in these symptoms of autoimmune problems. And I hate to overpromise this, so I, I want you to be careful as you listen to this, but um, I am so impressed with the number of patients that have had uh, a strong, uh, uh, like, like they're destined to have this autoimmune problem for a while. So their, their white blood cells are strongly attacking themselves. So you say, gosh, it's such a strong immune system. I wish I could just turn it around and attack the right people uh, or attack the right infections and stop attacking the patient. And um, you look at uh, when, when we study the immune system and we say, boy, in that year before my mom was diagnosed or started the ketogenic diet, her immune system was under attack. It had cancer and she, we weren't perfect, um, but she did get to a really critical point where she had to fast for 40 days. Yes, 40 days is what she fasted or somewhere just shy of 40 days. And she, at that point, is when her immune system really stopped attacking itself. It's also when her ketone numbers got the highest and her glucose got the lowest. Her Dr. Boz ratio was always under 20 for a whole month. And essentially, she, that is when the really big tide turned where her, her cancer just shrunk. Her cancer just disappeared. Uh, and it didn't... Um, there's much more to the story, and you guys can go read that in the book. Uh, but when I was at this conference filled with some of the genetic testing that I had that puts me at a predisposition for an autoimmune disease. And I said, you know, a couple, the, the one I'm thinking of specifically, I said, do you have symptoms of it? She goes, well, they've biopsied some of the arteries, and maybe there's some, in, maybe my body's attacking the arteries in my, in my system. It's not quite lupus, but uh, the inflammation is, is in my arteries. Um, my thyroid doesn't quite work right, and I do have high blood sugars. Uh, they they want to start me on insulin because they're not sure if my my immune system is attacking the cells that make insulin. And then I had another patient uh, or another gal this weekend say, and I got the genetic testing that says I'm predisposed to mold. And when mold is around, I'm going to be one of those people that really responds to it. So um, I'm really worried uh, if I go keto. And I just, I wish I could have taken the information in my mind and just like made a pensive of, just dropping it into her head to say, okay, you are really focused on what your genetic code is and how vulnerable your body is and that, you know, you are one of the people, like one in three, <laughs> that carries an increased risk for um, molds when they get a heavy dose of them. Their system's going to have a tougher time fighting them off. And you and lots of the physicians, you are focused on how do, I, how do I defend against that infection? How do I not get that infection? How do I lessen my exposure to the infection? And I would flip it. I would say, how do you strengthen your white blood cells when you make them? And really, when you're looking at some of the theories about why, why are these infections so much easier to treat when people are on keto? Why do these autoimmune problems just nearly disappear when patients are on a very strict uh, ketogenic diet. Um, and I mean that by saying that their ketones are high, their glucose is low. They're not just playing keto. They really stick to keto much like Grandma Rose did in that, um, uh, that first year of our keto journey. Uh, and the, the best answers seem to be, you will make perfect white blood cells as long as there is no inflammation in the bone marrow where you make them and the lymph cells where they mature. And you say, well, okay, doc, I want to have that. How do I do that? Um, because if you have these strong white blood cells, 
you don't have to fight against the fungus or the mold. Funguses and molds are, fungi and mold are easy to fight. These are not things that should take over your immune system. You should be able to give a knockout punch the first time a one of your white blood cells sees a mold or sees a, a fungus. Um, you look at patients who've had these an awful like years of Lyme's disease that they come in and say, doc, I just need you to help me fight this Lyme's disease. Can you give me an antibiotic? Can I take this? Um, and, and instead of using that approach, not that there's not some good evidence to say that, so we could try that, but there's way more power if you make the white blood cells in a setting where there's no inflammation in your bone marrow and in your lymph cells. Uh, those, uh, uh, those pockets where your, your white blood cells mature along your gut lining and throughout your body, your armpits, your neck, your groin, behind your knees, there's all these pockets of, of, of lymph cells of, um, uh, that, that really are in charge of defending you. And when patients come up to me and say, I don't want to do keto because I'm, I'm afraid that the, the, the molds are going to, you know, flare, or I'm not going to be able to, uh, you know, I couldn't fast because I have to take um, special precautions because I'm at risk for getting uh, fungus. Uh, what they're really saying, which is what my mom was really struggling with when she, was, when she first started this, is my immune system is in the crapper. It doesn't work at all. Uh, I can't fight against the tiniest of invaders. And I'm saying quit focusing on the, the invaders and strengthen your white blood cells. And the reason I'm telling you this is the power behind how much a white blood cell should do to repair and defend you. So one of the stories I tell uh, in my workshop is usually, um, usually uh, in the weeks of uh, fuck it, help me. I've got this, uh, this like cold sore that has just erupted on my face. It, it's the size of a, of a, of, uh, it's usually about the size of a nickel. I, I, I know that, uh, the internet says that if I take this prescription, that it'll go away. And I really need you to help me do this because I have a final tomorrow and then I have another final the next day. And, uh, uh, it's just a really important week for me to perform optimally. And, Usually they're talking and talking and I'll say, oh gosh, it just looks like you're under a lot of stress. I'm like, oh yes, I haven't been sleeping well and I'm not doing, you know, it's just been very intense and I, I really need to just get through this week. And uh, usually I'll take out a prescription pad, which should be their first warning that something's up because all prescriptions go in electronically these days. And I'll write on the prescription pad. I'll usually fold it in half and hand it to them and say, you know what? Good luck. I'll, I'll, um, I'll be here if you need anything else. Good luck with those finals. And many times they get all the way to the pharmacy before they open the prescription pad and say, uh, it says, go to bed, call me after sleeping. <laughs> They're like, what? I, I came into the office and you want me to go to bed? And I'm like, absolutely. You are a young, healthy person who doesn't have a problem with making white blood cells. But when you get that sleep deprived, your white blood cells get really wimpy. They act like they're 90 years old. And the virus called uh, herpes simplex, which is what cold sores are made of, it is the wimpiest virus. It is easy for your body to take care of. You will have a knockout, punch down, score of victory as long as your white blood cells are strong. And the fastest way to get them strong is a good night's sleep. You're asking me to give you a prescription that's going to cost you 75 bucks a pill. And there's a special little fine print in this prescription that says it will help that uh, virus die as long as you take it within 12 hours of feeling the very first tingle that it's coming out of the hiding place in a nerve and by the time it erupts on your face and is billowing out your lip uh, crusted over and been there for three days my pill does not do anything but take your money it doesn't help you <laughs> and I use this example to say okay they don't need keto okay they could use keto but they don't need keto as much as they need sleep and rest and their white blood cells are going to say we will do a good job for you as long as you take care of us we need sleep if we give us a little sleep we will fight off that little infection taking over your lip and causing you social stress uh, and i think the same message is there for people 
who are struggling with you know multiple autoimmune problems, um, multiple uh, immune systems that are failing. You know, Grandma Rose is an incredible example where at 71 years old, she had lymph nodes in her armpits and her neck, and I mean, and they were big lymph, lymph nodes. These were filled with cancer. Um, and she, over that past year, has had used antibiotics 50 out of the 52 weeks. Why? Because her immune system was awful. It was awful. And she's 71. She was not a spring chicken. She wasn't 18 years or 20 years old. And yet, from the week we went keto, it was the next week where she stopped taking the antibiotics because they had run out. But usually that means within a few days, she had another infection. She was going back to the doctor to ask for another prescription. But this time was different. She didn't get another infection. Now, that's one week. She still has plenty of crappy uh, cancerous white blood cells floating around. But enough of the white blood cells were improved where she could at least fight off the infections to stay off the antibiotics. And by the end of that year, she was fighting off some unbelievably in death-causing infections. She should have died. But the strength of her immune system had gotten so uh, youthful. That's the best word for it, too. Young, resilient, bounces back attacks the right bad guy <laughs> meaning you know her, her body had been known to like suddenly start attacking the wrong thing not just her thyroid but a couple of other things and of course that didn't improve the infections but here she was now uh, at the end of her 70 you know by the end at this point it's almost she's almost going to turn 73 and she hasn't had a single antibiotic in the year until she ends up in the hospital, which is part of the book too. And so when I, when I thought back to the woman today uh, who was speaking about, you know, Dr. Boz, I really want to start keto, but I'm afraid for my vulnerabilities against these infections. I just wanted to wrap her mind around how much better it will be if she steps over this threshold and says, empower your immune system by removing the sugar, which removes the inflammation. And it is in the act of doing that that you, uh, you get rid of a bunch of that squishiness, that, that, that soupy inflammatory process that your, your body has been living in. And through that, we say, uh, you know, I, I would have guessed it would have taken several weeks for my mom to notice an improvement in her infection. But you look back at the notes she kept and those antibiotics were gone after the first week she went keto. And we did not. <laughs> um, uh, checking urine ketones is really a good idea for the first month. And then I would flip over to the real side of poking your finger and checking your blood ketones. It really does help um, uh, to uh, just understand, are you playing keto? Or are you really uh, improving your immune system? When I reach out to some of the other experts that have um, even more experience in using the keto diet for their autoimmune uh, patients, uh, they are almost all carnivore. Like they, they are bone broth, they are liver pate, they are sardines, uh, they are high fat. Practically all of the dairy is removed. Uh, so they use lard and they use bacon grease and they use duck fat. I've noticed that if you do remove that, you can ring out that inflammation to even a, a better level. Um, so uh, if you've got uh, one of those problems of autoimmune problems, whether it's Crohn's disease or thyroid disease or rheumatoid arthritis, or you've got one of these fragile immune systems, which I mean, you can call them all allergies. And that, that is what your body, your body is saying, no, I don't, uh, we, we, don't, we don't understand what's coming in and we're fighting against it but it's over fighting. It's not really taking care of the problem and then stopping. Your immune system is made to attack and then be quiet. And it's not doing the quiet part. Um, all right, so uh, I am gonna get to some of your questions, which I, uh, I'm keeping over here. You can see them along, the si uh, along that side uh, on your screen, but I'm gonna scroll on the side here just to go back and I saw a couple of good, good ones. Um, let's see. Let's go to, 
Okay, this is a great one. Sharon S. says, my fasting blood sugar is always high, 94 to 107. Should I take ketones to supplement my ketones, which are between 0.5 and 1.2? Uh, Sharon, that's a really good question. So I've had a lot of questions about uh, supplements over the last probably month and a half. Well, I've been not perfect about answering um, my, the, the questions due to a bunch of travel. Uh, and I would say that's, there's two parts to that. Um, uh, first of all, I would really encourage you to be part of a support group. Um, and I say that because when you look at uh, my patients that are stuck in that zone where they've got those blood sugars, which they're not in the 70s or 80s where we really want them. You know, we even love to see some of those in the 60s. Their blood sugars have really lifted up into that 90 to 107 or sometimes 110. But Sharon has pretty good ketones from 0.5 to 1.2. That's, that's ketosis. She's doing a good job. She's really found that, she, I mean, she's stepped over the threshold. She's there, right? But uh, it's going to be tough to lose weight with that. So if you look at the, at the Dr. Boz ratio, um, and I, um, I will, um, I'm going to use this to do a little bit of teaching here with my, my slide deck. Let's go here. Uh, excuse me, here. So if we look at you know, Sharon's ability to get in ketosis, um, you know, the ketogenic diet gets you to a certain level. And if you, if you need to make a few more for a season, getting ketones in a can using the C8, C10, MCT are pretty good options. But the fasting is actually one of, uh, one of the most powerful ways to improve uh, the ketogenic um, diet. When, when I look at um, uh, ways that you can raise a ketone level, um, again, I like to focus on good, better, and best. So she said, should I add ketones? If you add ketones, um, you will get those ketones up, but they don't last for as long as you want them to. Um, when you use the MCT C8, C10, uh, those ketones will last a little longer, um, up to that six to eight hours, uh, or two to six hours, um, and, and that is a little bit better, but the most powerful way to increase your ketones is the fasting. Um, when I look at the Dr. Boz ratio and say, well, why do, we, why do I want you to do that? Um, again, that, uh, the, the Dr. Boz ratio has, uh, let's see here, I'm trying to find the right slide. <laughs> this is what I want. Um, uh, the Dr. Boz ratio is to take those glucose, and she's usually got a glucose around, looks like 100, uh, and then a ketone around one. So she's got a glucose around probably in the 90s to the 110, uh, or a Dr. Boz ratio, excuse me, in the 90s to the 110. And although that is a really good start, I don't want you to be discouraged. If you are trying to lose weight, uh, we're gonna have to get you down to a Dr. Boz ratio of less than 80. And so you say, well, okay, um, you know, when I was just talking about those folks with autoimmune problems, we like them to keep their Dr. Boz ratio less than 40. And that's how we know we are strengthening their immune system. We are really taking out that inflammation from their bone marrow, taking out the inflammation from their lymph nodes along, along their gut. And each week they do that, I am so impressed at how many of their autoimmune problems are less, how much of their joint pain dis disappears, how much their brain uh, uh, repairs. And of course, uh, the Dr. Boz ratio of 20 is what I took my mom to, Grandma Rose, when she was fighting cancer. That is a really tough place to go. Um, but Sharon, we used BHB to get her there. So she had fasting for that month, but during times where when she would just have a difficult day, um, or we would see that her Dr. Boz ratio, just it, we couldn't get it to 20 or less, uh, we supplemented with BHB. And I think that uh, is a great segue into uh, answering a couple of the other questions that um, you say, well, what should Sharon do? Should she take supplements or should she fast? So let me just get a really big thumbs up. That is exactly what I would have you do if you attended my support group to say, hey, we can't make decisions unless you've got some good evidence for where we're at. You gotta get us the numbers. So Sharon, really good job for checking your numbers. 
Um, but if you're new, this weekend I had a ton of uh, newbies come and say, how do I get started, how do I get started? And they're 80 pounds overweight, they're 100 pounds overweight. And I said, I need you to go get this off the internet. And there are other brands out there, I don't care which one you get. I made this one because I was tired of people putting other stuff in it. And um, I, I wanted a high density of BHB in each scoop. I wanted it to make a significant difference when you did drink it. So um, this is the raspberry BHB. And I think when you're first on a ketogenic diet, you should mix it with a little bit of heavy whipping cream. So I take a scoop of this, put it in my uh, blender. I put in about a fourth of a cup of heavy whipping cream. I put in some water and some ice. I blend it up and I would drink it and sip on it for um, you know, a few hours. Again, the chemical only lasts for two to three hours in your body and then your system is either going to use it as energy during that time or it's going to waste it. Wasting it means it's going to end up in your urine. So if you check your urine ketone strip after you took this supplement, you'll say, yep, it came in and it went out. You'll say, oh, well, that's a waste of my money. I shouldn't do that because it's expensive. They're like 50 bucks. Uh, no, 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 don't, don't play that game. You, you have to expose the mitochondria or the cells within your body to ketones so that they remember. That's not exactly right, but the, the cellular function to use a ketone is not an on-off switch that happens in a flash. It takes a bit of time. And the more inflamed you are, the harder it is for me to get a ketone into the cell. The cells of people that aren't inflamed can take ketones and they zip right inside that cell uh, into the cellular, intracellular space. It is amazing. I, 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 the more I study the supplements of BHB, the more I'm like, this is brilliant for my demented patients, for the patients who are super overweight and don't know how to get started. For that gal who said, I'm just afraid because I don't want my immune system to flare and I really have this problem with mold. I said, just start with three weeks of saturating your blood with ketones. And if you're trying to saturate your blood with ketones, I haven't found one that raises your ketones as much as the BHB supplements. I like this formula the best. I also put a little magnesium in there because every one of my patients is low on magnesium. We'll talk about that a different way. Okay, so Sharon, that's, that's step one. If you're, if you're a newbie, that's what I would start with. But if you're like me, um, where I've been keto for three years, I'm, I'm pretty good. Uh, I try to fast once a week to get my Dr. Boz ratio to 40 or less because I want my immune system to be clean. I, I continue to see that you know, I had a really intense three days and although I fasted for most of my presentation, uh, standing on my feet for two days, I have swelling in the lower part of my leg. Um, in both legs, it's, it's just part of being human and I didn't exercise the last couple of days. So I, I know that the inflammation is still present in my system or I wouldn't do that. If I had the perfect life and I exercised every day and I you know, never had a carb, I was completely carnivore, I probably would never, I wouldn't see that, but I'm not perfect. <laughs> so uh, as I was getting done with uh, my workshop, I said, okay, I'm going to use the, the capsules and I'm going to take them to help my system just really get a higher level of ketosis. Um, I, I knew I had my live performance tonight. We were driving back. I was, I was definitely tired and I knew if I ate a bunch of carbs, I would feel better, but those would feel better really quick and psh, then I would crash. By supplementing with some uh, ketones, I also knew that uh, if I did this, um, I would have good energy and I would be able to not, I could use caffeine and I bet I've been known to do that, but caffeine also keeps me awake when I get, take it this late in the day and I've got another really big day tomorrow so I cannot afford not to sleep. So I actually took um, uh, five of these capsules when I got up this morning and then three hours later I checked my ketones and they were only 0.5. So then I took another five. Um, and again, they're a lot smaller uh, than, the, than the, so these are just, uh, they're pretty big. And you look at the comparison of the other brands on the market, and whereas one scoop of the supplement, of the, uh, the drink, and my ketones will be like 3.8, 4.1. And I can feel it, I know I can feel it. So, uh, you know, Sharon, I, I would say the, that when your fasting blood sugars are still that high and your ketones aren't great, 
making more ketones is the answer. Um, the danger I've seen in stories like yours is they get frustrated and they give up. And that's why I would, I would start a support group, uh, call it book club for keto or call it just support for keto. Do not serve food while you're there. This is not about eating. It's about creating just a check-in where people come to uh, just say, how you doing? And we do ours once a week on Fridays. And I try really hard never to miss that, whether I have to Skype in or um, I get to be there in person because the accountability to the patients that come, I do it free of charge because I really see that if they uh, if they don't have other people modeling the behavior that fasting really can improve your immune system. Fasting will be what raises those blood sugar or blood ketones and lowers that blood sugar. Um, the other major thing that I've taught lots of women who have that exact problem where their sugars are up and their ketones are kind of wimpy is you shouldn't be eating after three o'clock in the day. It's the hours before sunrise that gets you. So start with a 10 hour zone before sunrise. So that's probably nothing after nine o'clock at night and then go to uh, 12 hours before sunrise. So that's like, well, I got the math wrong there. So look, six hour, six o'clock at night would be 12 hours before sunrise uh, and then do that for a week. And if your blood sugars are still above 100 or in those, not in the 70s to 80s, I would cut food off at four o'clock um, in the afternoon and do, that's only salt and water from four o'clock on. If you have any uh, like craving you need to do, uh, I tell them to use a supplement during those evening hours, but not food. And that's been how I've used uh, the supplements plus fasting. Again, we're trying to strengthen your skill of fasting. And that's why I'm saying the word support group. That's not why I'm saying the word, uh, you know, checking in and making sure you've got those blood sugars. Um, just one more little, um, let's see, I want to do this one. One more little thing that I tell patients to do is, um, I want to see if I could find, ah, let's see. Mm, maybe it's in this one. Hang tight. Don't give up. Oh, here it is. Um, this one. Okay, so uh, the, if you're starting a support group, this is really helpful. Um, that I, I would have you start by going to Dr. Boz, uh, this page right here, and then you see that word playlist right under Annette Bosworth? Click on playlist. Oh, this is another thing I told my mom I would show her. So mom, if you're watching, do you see that little bell Next to it says subscribing 172,000. It's that little bell that needs to be clicked if you wanna get the little ding that says, I'm going live. She's like, how do all my friends know when you're going live and I don't? And I'm like, mom, you gotta, you gotta push the little bell on the YouTube <laughs> and it's gotta be specifically on my channel. So that will give you just a little ding that says, hey, she's going live or she's got a new video. Anyway, so that's for you, mom. Um, and okay, so that's, that's what YouTube looks like. But you see that, this is the list of playlists. You can see at the top of that, it says playlist and it's, and it's in gray. But that red uh, playlist with the little superhero fat and it has 44, um, 44 uh, videos. This is the video list that I've made for people who wanna start a support group. And it is really just little snippets from the book, little lessons on how to be in ketosis. How, how do you get beginners on board without overwhelming them? You know, the videos are like four minutes long, six minutes long, eight minutes long, two minutes long. So they're, they're little nuggets of keto information. And if you use that as something you watch in your support group together, and then just have everybody check in, tell them your name, tell them how long you've been keto and what you did good this past week and what you struggled with. And boy, we use that as curriculum in our group and it really is, it's really supportive. Uh, just like anybody who's trying to change behavior, Sharon isn't, isn't uh, she's at a really important tipping point where she's got these improved numbers, but they're not great. And to get her to the next level, she needs to not give up. Don't give up. Keep checking your numbers. It is really important. Use supplements correctly. They're not gonna take over and be the mastermind, but they're really important for beginners. You do not need to suffer through like 
many of the previous versions of ketone, ketone education has taught, you really can use them those first three weeks to get those mitochondria woke up, to get your brain awake. Uh, for those folks fighting immune systems, just let me strengthen your immune system with ketones in a can, sip on them every day for three weeks. And I, I am so impressed with how many of my patients no longer need antibiotic having a struggle. Uh, they now have a strong immune system because their body has made it to this other side of the, the chemistry chi chiasm. So I, um, that's a really good question, Sharon. Thank you so much for asking it. And uh, let's just see if we can take one more question. Uh, I did get started a little late, so it is the top of the hour, but I'm gonna <clears throat> um, see if I can find another good question here. Uh, let's see. So uh, uh, let's see here. We're talking about insulin and um, uh, let's see. Ha! Huh. Somebody said, "Do you have a release date for your next book?" Uh, I, I loved the first book. I'll tell you, I've been uh, do. I I have a really good outline for the book. I have several of the first chapters written. Um, it's, it's the hardest part about writing a keto book right now is there are three major studies that are about to be released that I want in the book. So I'm, I'm pushing that project into a important but not urgent zone uh, because I want that data in the book. Um, I think I could do that until from now until the time I die. So I have to be careful of that. But I've been working also on uh, trying to find a way to get the information about what's in my brains workshop. Uh, again, my passion has been uh, how do I how do I satisfy uh, something deep in my heart about the brain health of people, whether that's Alzheimer's or addiction or depression. Uh, knowing that keto is a big part of that, uh, but also uh, that I have to spend to so many funerals of patients who've. Um, buried loved ones from addiction in this uh, country that uh, and I have a big part to contribute to that so I've been working on some of that my uh, my contract with Department of Defense has just a few more major lectures that I have to satisfy so and then I had the last month where I moved my son into to college in Hawaii which was not what we were planning on but uh, he got in and it's in-state tuition if you're South Dakotan that's so cool um, so the release date I don't have yet but I'm working on it it's definitely a top priority and you'll find out here <laughs> you'll know it first um, all right well I think I'm gonna call that good and say thank you thank you thank you for all those that tuned in um, I do uh, have a big uh, uh, date on Tuesday night that Ken Barry and I are gonna do a live on Facebook together. We've been friends for over a year now and wrote a book about the same time, both primary care physicians trying to teach on keto. And we're on speaking circuits, but boy, we've only overlapped on a couple of them. And so I told Nisha, his wife, I'm like, you need to staple gun his schedule uh, down so we can get, get on a, a connection somewhere. And I think we're gonna finally do it this Tuesday. So if you haven't, uh, uh, if you ha happen to click on Facebook on Tuesday night, you can watch us uh, have our first live conversation. All right, well, I am signing off, and I'm going to use my friend's gift here to help me say we are improving. Ah, let's see if I can get that held up there. Right there. <laughs> we are improving your health one ketone at a time. I'm signing off as Dr. Boz. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Sunday, 6 o'clock Central.